Today is a great day as we are finally going to review the best that Samsung has to offer. Well, at least in their Note lineup, which is going to be the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So the reason that I decided to make this video this late after the phone released is that I wanted to really get into the details and talk about things that you only find out when you've used the device for a considerable amount of time instead of just listing all the specs for you. Well, which I'll give you anyway. But at this point, I've used this phone for a month, slightly over a month actually, and I've mostly had an amazing experience, but with some bummers here and there, which I'll talk about. So without any further ado, let's get into the full review of Samsung's Note 20 Ultra. Starting off with the design, the phone is really, really well built. Like it feels like a solid brick with curved glass edges and squared off corners. With years of experience, Samsung has polished their glass and metal sandwich design. And this time around, it's fitted with Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and back of the phone with a color matched aluminum frame. Talking about colors, I chose to go with the Mystic Bronze color variant of this phone. So usually I almost always go with black for all my devices. But this color literally outshadowed all the other color options that this phone comes in, including black. Like, just look at this thing. It's the best combination of beautiful and premium I've ever seen on a phone. And Samsung's decision to go with the matte finish back plays a huge part in making the device look this elegant. The camera bump is, it's massive and it clearly is the attention seeker. But the fact that Samsung embraced it and even chose to add accented rings to the sensors really makes it look great. To be honest, I don't mind the bump at all, but if you do, you can easily cover it up using a case like the Nilkin case I've been using, which also adds a little bit of protection to this expensive phone. Doing a quick overview of the phone, the power and volume buttons are both on the right side, there is a microphone and a SIM tray on the top that also supports expansion via micro SD card. There is nothing on the left side of the phone and on the bottom there is a microphone, a type C charging port and of course the S Pen slot and the speaker grill which have both moved to the left side now. Coming to the screen, I have to say that this is the best display panel that is available in a smartphone today. The display is 6.9 inches with minimal bezels on all sides and a top-centered, tiny hole-punch cutout to house the selfie camera. And although you yet cannot enable 120Hz and QHD Plus resolution at the same time, this huge display size paired with the 120Hz refresh rate on an AMOLED panel makes it unbeatable by any smartphone in the market today. It makes media consumption on this device a real treat, like watching movies, editing photos, Scrolling through feeds or just simply browsing through the UI also feels incredible. The phone also has a stereo speaker setup, tuned by AKG and supporting Dolby Atmos. They also sound amazing with a good amount of bass and clarity even at higher volumes. There is an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner under the screen, which is exactly the same as the Note 10's, but nonetheless works well for me most of the times and I haven't had any issues. This is your classic spec rundown for the configuration that I've been using. The phone comes with either the Snapdragon 865 Plus or Exynos 990 depending on your region. And I got the Exynos 990 version, which we'll talk about in a minute. Comes with 128, 256 or 512 GB of UFS 3.0 storage with 8 or 12 GB of RAM, again depending on your region. A 4500 mAh battery with 25 watts fast charging, 15 watts wireless charging, and 4.5 watts reverse wireless charging. It's also IP68 dust and water resistant, and of course it comes with the S Pen stylus, which now has an improved 9 millisecond latency from the previous 42 milliseconds. Let's talk about the cameras on this phone, as it clearly is the standout factor of the Note 20. Like literally. The phone has a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, a 108 megapixel main sensor, and a 12 megapixel periscope telephoto sensor with 5 times optical zoom. The phone supports up to 8K video recording at 24 frames per second, and the front camera is a 10 megapixel sensor. When it comes to the quality or the results, 
Most standard daytime shots look excellent taken on the main camera of the phone using auto mode, if slightly oversaturated, which has been the norm with Samsung phones. Low light performance is also really good, as the large sensor collects plenty of light and manages to keep detail that might otherwise get lost. And night mode enhances the already good low light shots by pulling out even finer details. The ultra wide lens is always welcome, and with this phone, Samsung did a fine job of keeping the color profile similar between the lenses, which is abundantly clear here. The 50x periscope camera also pulls out some great results, and it's great to have. However, I did notice that the phone only switches to it when you zoom into 5x or more. Like even at 4.9x, the phone just crops in using the main lens. So the quality is not as good until it switches to the telephoto lens, which you'll only get when you zoom into 5x or more. Keeping that in mind, it does restrict the use of the periscope camera in many scenarios. Moving on, the S20 Ultra had major issues when it comes to focusing on subjects, but the Note 20 Ultra added a dedicated laser focusing sensor to ensure sharp shots, and the addition worked out without a doubt, as now focusing is faster and delivers much clearer photos. Overall, the camera setup on this phone is one of the best that you'll manage to get out of any smartphone today, be it in terms of photos or videos, and there's no way it's going to disappoint. Talking about the processors, as I said I've been using the Exynos variant of this phone, and to be honest I haven't had any issues whatsoever. However, I did notice a few things that are specific to the Exynos variant. First is that it came with the AKG Type-C headphones inside the box, which hasn't been the case with most others. Maybe that's related to the region or the processor, we really cannot be sure due to Samsung's model and distribution complications. Another thing to note is that the version with the Snapdragon 865 Plus processor is noticeably more powerful than the Exynos one I have. And although I haven't had any performance issues with my model, the battery life has really taken a hit, and I suspect that that is because of the power efficiencies of the Exynos processor. The battery life does last a full day with 120Hz and 1080p, with between 4-5 to five hours of screen on time, which isn't that bad, but the Snapdragon version offers around an hour of extra screen on time as far as I know, which is quite a big difference to keep in mind if you're looking to buy this phone. Finally, getting the S Pen out, there are some great improvements with this generation. First of all, the S Pen slot has now moved to the left side of the phone, which did take some to get used to as I found myself looking for it on the right side, but it's not that bad. I guess they had to make that move because of the gigantic camera module that took up too much space inside the phone. The pen still uses the satisfying clicking mechanism to lock into place, can be put in the slot on either side, charges wirelessly while inside the slot, and as you can see, it's color matched depending on the color of the phone, which is all amazing. The major improvement with the Note 20 is that the latency has been reduced from 42 milliseconds all the way to 9 milliseconds, and although it's really hard to show on video, there is literally no perceivable lag or stutter when using it, like as soon as you touch the screen, it's recorded as a response. Samsung's new features like the air gestures are fun to play around with but not really that great, like they feel kinda slow and aren't very accurate. But anyway, what the S Pen does best is what its original job has been. The 120Hz display paired with 9 milliseconds of latency makes it an outstanding experience for editing photos, jotting down notes or just sketching random stuff on your phone which I've been doing most of the time. To sum up with the S Pen, there is really no other device out there that you'd want to go for if you want a stylus on your smartphone. The Note 20 offers a great overall high-end smartphone experience, and the software, which is One UI 2.5 based on Android 10, plays a big part of that. And although it's yet a fairly heavy-handed skin when it comes to fonts, icons, and general appearance of the menus, and a noticeable amount of bloatware with the redundant applications. Things you don't like can probably be changed with an icon pack or other setting control that usually comes with the flexibility of Android. Samsung's software has improved significantly over the years, and importantly, 
They have committed to three generations of Android updates for many of its top phones including the Note lineup, which is really good news for Note 20 Ultra owners who should see Android 11, 12 and even 13 in the coming years. Wrapping up with the review of this phone, it serves as a great addition to the Note lineup. However, at the price point of $1300, it becomes one of the most expensive smartphones available in the market today. So it really should be offering the best in class in every single aspect, which it kind of does. Like the build quality is ultra, the display is also ultra, performance is ultra, cameras are ultra, and it also offers all the other features tweaks and gimmicks that you'd expect from a Samsung phone at this price, with the S Pen being the cherry on top. The only aspect I might say is not ultra is the battery life, especially when using it at 120Hz, which I don't know why you won't be if you get this phone. So unless you have a Note 10 or Note 10 Plus, or you just tend to have smaller hands, <laughs> I highly recommend this phone to most people. Well that's it for this video, hoping you enjoyed, be sure to comment your questions below. I also have the review of the Buds Live coming up really soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay tuned to the channel. With that said, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.